61A, lecture number 15. Announcements. Homework 4 is due on Tuesday. Project 2 is due on Thursday. Homework 4 is pretty small, but Project 2, like all the other projects, is quite large. So, concentrate your effort there. There will be a project party on Monday from 5 to 7 in the Soda Hall Labs. You can ask questions about homework then too if you want, but we'll mostly focus on the project. And if you turn in your project a day early, you can get an extra credit point for submitting at least 24 hours in advance. We've been surveying some of the students in this course to see if there are things we can do better. And one piece of feedback that we heard loud and clear was that the labs took a lot of time in addition to lab time, and that discussion questions were sometimes so challenging that students didn't know how to get started. So we're going to make some changes to both lab and discussion. The required portion of lab that you turn in in order to show that you've participated in the lab is going to shrink, with the goal that everybody in the course should be able to finish the required portion of the lab during the lab period. So, it's still a good idea to come to lab and solve it then, but I'm hoping that the lab assignments won't be so large that they get in the way of your homework and project assignments. As for discussion questions, we're going to make sure that there are some simple questions on the discussion handouts in addition to some of the more challenging ones that we include as well. We include challenging questions there because people want them. So when we've surveyed students in the past, They've said they want midterm level challenging questions all the way throughout the course. And I think that's a great idea. So that's why some of the questions on the discussion handouts are quite challenging. But we'll also make sure to mix in some more introductory questions as well so that you can build up experience with each topic. So those are things that will change about the course in order to make it better for you. I can also offer you some tips that might help you approach the problems in this course. So say you've just received a question that describes some function you're supposed to implement, Towers of Hanoi. The first thing you should do is understand why the output is what it is for the given inputs that are provided in the test cases, because you're trying to understand exactly what the question is asking for. So, skipping over those test cases is not a good idea. Instead, understanding why each one is exactly what it is, is a great idea. So this is step one. We force you to do it in the projects by making you unlock the tests, but in homeworks and discussions in lab, we don't force you. But it's a good idea to do that anyway. Step two is to formulate a strategy or a plan which means instead of writing code, you want to write diagrams or descriptions of exactly what your approach will be. In Towers of Hanoi, this is your chance to write down that the way you're going to move the whole tower from start to end is to move a tower of size n minus one from start to other, and then move one disk from start to end, and then move the tower that you moved originally from other to end. So articulating that plan is really important, and it happens before you actually try to implement anything. And then the third step is to translate those ideas that you've come up with so far into a program. Now here's my last tip. All of this can be done on a sheet of paper. You don't have to use a computer to write a program, and you certainly don't have to use a computer in order to understand the behavior of the function you're trying to implement or to develop a strategy. So grab a sheet of paper, let your mind work without the distraction of having a computer in front of you until you know what you're trying to solve, how you intend to solve it, and at least a first draft of what the implementation looks like.